All right, YouTube, we're going to try and do a trigger job on the uh, M1895 Nagant revolver. <laughs> I finally went out and bought a uh, trigger scale. It's a Timney scale. It is uh, 8 ounces to 8 pounds in 2, two ounce increments. Uh, we're going to go and get started. I want to try and do some pre and post uh Measurements that we can see if we're if anything we're doing is making a difference. I'm hoping by the end of this uh, It will I've already done some pre-measurements. It's gonna impress you in my first video when I showed this revolver off I, sh I stated that it probably had a 20 or so pound uh, Trigger and the single stage is heavier than my AR and standard AR triggers about eight pounds um, well, Let me go ahead and for all you safety satellites. This is unloaded still haven't fired it uh, but double action, the trigger scale will not even register it. Single action um, may surprise you, but if we do this right, I'll hold it out here. You're supposed to hook it on the trigger and pull back until it fires. Sorry, it slipped off. Uh, and if you can see, it has gone well past eight pounds and did not uh, do it. We'll try it again because I did slip that off there and we will uh, see if we can get it to fire. Okay, we got it to fire. And if you can see, well past eight pounds. I mean, if you did the, a scale of, you know, that distance is seven to eight pounds you're probably what 10 11 pounds out to here hopefully we can uh, adjust that down so I'll go ahead and uh, disassemble the, the right or the revolver and uh, show you how we're gonna start be right back okay I've got the side plate off now and uh, as you can see there's only about five parts that really move on the Nagant you have the falling block the hammer the spring the abutment piece, trigger, and the trigger fall. And basically what I'm going to do is, uh, I have some sandpaper. Actually, let me get that out. What I have is some 500 super fine, and then I have some 1200 mirror fine. I've also got uh, my fine Arkansas whetstone, and... Uh, I'm going to basically kind of look before you take this all apart. You're just going to find all these pieces, kind of, uh, it's going to be hard left this side, but manipulate the firearm and decide what pieces uh, operate on each other. And then I'm going to lightly file, not file, but polish, sorry, polish with that super fine, that 1200 grit, and uh, even some uh, flits and a rag, and just polish those pieces up anywhere that they rub, and uh, then we'll start again, we'll, I'll put it, I'll uh, put it back together, and, uh, or I might not, it'd probably work like this, holding it, and uh, probably put the side plate on, fire it again, and see if I can get it to register any closer on the uh, trigger scale and then we'll go on to the major piece that we're gonna uh, tune to see if that'll work so I'll be back I'm gonna uh, take this apart uh, there's a whole nother video that I've posted It's probably the longest video I've ever made It's a 20 minute or so video full disassembly recently of this if you need to see how I do that basically I'm gonna take all these parts out polish them up and then I'll be right back another quick thing once I've got it apart that I wanted to mention is if uh, if the hammer seems pretty smooth whenever you're cocking it, uh, leave it alone. Mine doesn't have any grittiness to it at all. Uh, you don't want to mess with the sear and the hammer if you don't if you can avoid it. Uh, for a simple thing like this, I mean, we're going to keep this simple. I am not a gunsmith. This is one thing I won't mess with, and uh, I wouldn't recommend that you mess with it either. Another thing that I forgot to mention earlier is uh, whenever you're doing your polishing, polish these posts because those uh the hammer and the trigger both rotate on those posts i mean you can uh i don't know if i'll be able to do this but 
you can feel how gritty and if you can hear this that's just my nail going up and down that post it's got so many polishing grooves in it but if you can just run your nail you might be able to hear how rough those pins are and the tr and the uh, the trigger post is just as bad so make sure you take a little bit of that sandpaper wrap it around there and just twist it back and forth and try and polish up uh, some of those pieces as well okay I got done polishing everything and uh, as I cycle it I mean it feels a lot I mean there's still some grittiness where I could probably go a bit more it feels really smooth now as compared to how it how it did at one point so let's put the uh, spring back in which is always a bear for me I don't know why I can't master the, the assembly of this spring going in right but it's something that normally takes me a couple shots okay so that's back in it's reassembled I mean it it feels so much smoother. I don't know if we made a single bit of difference. Um, but uh, it feels a lot better. So let's go ahead and I'll just hold it here. Uh, reset that trigger scale. Um, let's see if anything improved at all. I have a feeling it didn't, but it feels better. Well, as you can see, it's still well past 8 pounds. Um, but we're going to move to the next step now. which uh, And I, <clears throat> I'm not just saying it. It really does feel smooth. When you, I mean, before you could kind of feel the grittiness of it cycling. But uh, I'm very happy. I mean, basically I polished the, uh, I polished the back side of this uh, trigger fall. I polished the side of the trigger. I, uh, the, uh, I forget what the falling block or trigger block, I'm not quite sure what that piece is called, but that side, the reverse side, and the arm that intersects into the trigger, I polished all those. So the gun is smoother, but we're still having a very heavy trigger pull. Um, I'm hoping to fix that by adjusting this dual leaf spring. And this is going to take some care and uh, some time not to uh, to mess it up any, uh, for lack of a better term. You don't want to fuck up this spring. You're going to need your Dremel power tool, whatever you use. And you're going to want to have a uh, bit of a sanding wheel. Uh, and the process is basically right here in the spring. And I'm going to try and zoom in here. Too much. All right. Here on... This is the side that goes under the trigger. What you want to look for is uh, the spring is very thick here and then it right around in here starts to thin out and then it gets about the same thin consistency the rest of the way. So what you want to do is you want to take your sanding wheel and you want to take off just a little bit of material right through here. And you do not want this to get hot by any means. So uh, when I do this, I'm going to get my Dremel out and I'll have a little uh, dish of water and I'll sand a little bit and I'll cool it back off. And I'll sand it a bit and I'll cool it back off. Now remember, this is the only piece that operates, this is, has all the tension, this is the only spring that you're working with. So if you ruin this, uh, you're going to be done. But lightly sand that face, dip it in water lightly saying that you don't want to mess with the heat tempering of this spring and then what I'm going to do is I'll take that 1200 grit sandpaper and I'll just lightly polish that back up and oil it uh, the reverse is also going to be needed to be done however you can take a bit more off here but again you want to sand it down cool it, sand it down, dip it in some water and cool it. Uh, one of the worst things you can do here is if you whenever you're assembling, assembling, don't use pliers, don't use a vise to try and hold this. If you score a line perpendicular to this spring on either side 
that's where the spring will break. It will fail if you score any kind of a line. So make sure you're very careful. Go with the grain of the metal because it's constantly squeezing back and forth. Every time you operate, this leaf spring is working both sides. So if you score a line, you will break it, and you don't want to do that either. So I'm going to get going, and uh, I'll be back. All right, YouTube. There has been a lot of sanding, a lot more than I had anticipated. Uh, I did not do anything or take so much metal off that it is anywhere uh, structurally unsound. You can see, you probably can't even tell the thickness that I even took off. Now remember, when you're doing this side, this is to help your double action. This is to help your single action. Uh, I did not focus as much on here, although I did take some off, and I feel like I could take quite a bit more. My main goal was to make this more of a shooter so that I could actually, you know, hit something with it. Um, and as you knew before, it was not even on the charts. I don't even know how many pounds it was. Probably close to 11 or 12. Um, but it's, it's taking me about uh, 20 minutes. And if you can see by my hand, that's the dust. And you can see maybe in the water if it's going to... Hang on. Without the glare. If I can hold my hand. There you go. You can see the amount of metal filings that I've gotten off of the spring. Most of that came off of this bottom section. But I was bound to determine to make this uh, a gun worth shooting, so here we go. Um, and I think with a little bit more polishing of the parts and a little bit more tuning, fine uh, tuning and sanding on that uh, spring, we might be able to get <clears throat> under what I meant now. But. That is a seven and a half pound trigger. We'll do it again. And I'm not saying that a seven and a half pound trigger is good for a single action revolver. What I am saying is, well, that one came right in at eight. I'm just saying that from, I'm gonna guess 12 pounds and you guys can make your own judgment on if uh come on focus in if that's the distance between each pound and that well if that is eight pounds what is that because that's where we started anyway so that's where we started and now we are back to well we're consistently coming in at eight I was getting seven and a half before I turned the camera back on but uh, either way an eight pound trigger uh, is still a far uh, vast improvement over where we were originally okay guys uh, got it back together and um, definitely think some of that polishing helped out she definitely seems like a snappier weapon now um, but now that we've got it all back together let's confirm that it's still at eight pounds not that anything should have changed but Just under eight.